I like to leave the geographical features in there. I think it gives it a little bit of character strength. We're gonna try to get a quick attach fabricated up on this thing. Now, now I've got a quick attach on my John Deere 755. You saw me kind of measuring an adapter plate. Neil Cove from Neil Cove Dig Drive Y actually did that quick attach for me. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. You can check it out. Man's got a fantastic channel. I think you'd absolutely love it. But we're gonna try to figure our way through this one on our own. We're gonna address a couple concerns too. Some people wanna know if we're gonna reinforce these plates because they look a little thin metal wise for what we're doing with an actual backhoe and we absolutely are but i'll be 100 percent honest with you i don't know if this is going to work but we're going to try to figure it out what i'm doing is marking out the width of the adapter plate of what it's going to be and just a little inside that adapter plate so we got a little bit of room to work with now i don't have the plate here i ordered it from vever it's a half inch quick adapter plate that will eventually go on the bucket for the bucket itself but this job i got up north that's coming up I'm going to be doing in a couple of videos. I need the forks on that job. And I thought about renting Dirt Perfect's skid steer to do it. But I figured for the same amount of money that I could rent his skid steer for that job, I could spend the money and actually fab up a quick attach and have my own set of heavy forks. I just want to double check that I measured that right. It'd be a shame to start this whole project off with the wrong measurement. It would definitely be to brand of the channel and the way I typically do things. But I'm going to try to get this one right on the first try. Just to kind of try and visualize some things real quick. Which is pretty close. Now as I'm looking at this, i got to make sure I'm envisioning this inversed because this will get torched off and welded to this side of the bracket. I'm just kind of trying to position things and see if the spacing is going to work the way I need it to. So my plan is to torch these off. That way we can reuse these with the pins up above. We know everything fits. We know everything works. We know the spacing's correct. And with that gap that's left there, whenever we get the quick attach plate that's going to come in for the bucket, we can set it on there, shim it to where it needs to be, weld it, and put any plate fill in there we need to do. But this will give us everything we need to get them on the actual brackets. Before I go cutting all this stuff loose though, I want to get it locked in. I'm going to put a bar between the two of these. That way it also kind of helps keep these symmetrical because whenever you go to roll the bucket, if they're independent, one might go a little quicker than the other, which can kind of make it difficult to hook things up. We'll also give it a little bit of extra strength and the material I want to use will also give it a little bit of extra weight because remember, the thing about a backhoe, it's got this big old honking thing hanging off the back which makes it really tail heavy. I know, that's kind of surprising. So whenever we drop that bucket, that's a bunch of weight off the front, which means she's going to be a little light in the nose, which could be difficult depending on what implement we have or even just getting into the implement we're going to hook up to. I've got this chunk of steel. Let's see if anything's living under here. Ooh, I've got a random chain attached to it. I got this big old chunk of steel off an old forklift mast. I think that'll be the perfect piece to do it. Gives us a little bit of weight. It'll definitely give us the strength. Probably ought to try to heat and beat this straight a little bit since we're going to be using that on the quick attach bracket. Could weld something across there to maintain that. I'm just going to measure and see if it changes. As long as I heat right here and soften it good, hopefully I can just kind of manipulate that spot. Balance it. Sure that's safe. You just, you hang out for a minute. Thank you. 
What is this, the factory? My gosh, that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get a good measurement. safety deposit and we'll have her for later it's looking pretty good I think I take a grinder clean that slag off both ends and we'll have a decent fit That's kind of warm. Would you look at her, bud? Say, that's a pretty nice fit. So I'm gonna use my little Vever, my little Amazon special flux core wire welder. I got that adapter going on. Works pretty well off that generator, actually. And that way I can use that to get some tacks. I don't have to push as hard with that as I do with the sticks whenever I'm stick welding, and it's just kind of floating right now. Get a couple tacks in it, then we'll fire the miller up and we'll get some sticks running. When I said that generator likes it, I might have been fibbing a little to you. It gets a little surgy on the generator, but that's okay. She's got her tacked in there. I'll take a wire wheel, clean those off. That should hold her good enough. We can run some sticks. So I ran a quick vertical there and a bead right down there. And a bead right down there and a quick vertical there. That's gonna hold that in place plenty that we can go ahead and torch this stuff out and start laying it out. But I'm still debating on how I want to space, keep these spaced. I should be able to weld something here and here and be okay because we're gonna to weld to the plate on that end of the operation, right? Right. I got these little chunks of steel. We'll just throw those on there. I don't think that'll hurt us.
So I got this thing marked to cut. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous about it. One, a couple things. I'm hoping I got enough gas in the uh, acetylene tank to get all the cut to get all the cutting done that I've got to do today. A little nervous about that. And two, in case you haven't noticed, this is like a homeowner DIY special kind of thing. I'm not a welder. I just own one. I'm certainly not a torch. Er, I just happen to own one of those too. So we're gonna put our best into it and see what it turns out. Just gonna go slow, take my time, time lapse you through it, and you'll see the results. I know we're gonna have a lot of trimming to do once we get it off. I'm just trying to get the cut off of there as clean as I can. It's slightly terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's flip her over. All right. I gotta figure out how I wanna get these. Bottom side of that. The way I envision this working and the way it's working, they're two different things right now. They're separate, so we're, we're problem solving our way through it. Yeah, that's gonna help things. All right. Okay. So we gotta get in that much standoff. I don't know if you can see that gap right there. That's what we gotta do. I gotta cut some half inch plate. That's what this is, I think. Yeah, I'll get tape measure in a second. Pretty sure that's half inch, but we gotta cut a plate to go from there to there and fill that gap in. And then, once we get that, we can trim this out for this mechanism to function. Should be able to do that just fine. Should have done this from the get-go. Just set it up like this on the bucket. That way I can take a gander at it a little bit better. That's making a lot more sense. I'm liking that, okay seam on this what's the best way to do like that. Well that's just pure luck I'm pretty sure. So I've got four cardboard templates all labeled a couple notes on some of them take them over to the torch get them cut up see what we end up with. Need some more steel out of that pile right there. There appear to be some angry critters in there though. Let's see if we can get her loose from a safe distance. Oh no! See those moves? Look at that. It's a rock and a rock. Cool. Okay, so here's your update and here's where we're at. I got all the little plates, the little fill-in pieces to get me the height and clearance I need. Cut, cleaned up, ground, beveled, and ready. The bottom sides of these are cut, cleaned up, ground, ready. I'm going to take the little Vever welder, go around and start getting stuff tacked into place. I'm gonna tack these into place first and then I can set the whole thing on there. And then we'll just kind of go around and start getting things tacked. And the goal is to get everything we've got cut tonight welded up solid, and hopefully next time we can work on the reinforcement gussets, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. So these are gonna get tacked right there like that. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's not even close. What happened? So I'm gonna get my mess picked up and caught up. So I'm gonna get my mess picked up and caught up. I've got everything tacked how I want it. Once I get that out of the way, we'll get the miller going and start running some rods and get this thing put together. So here's where we're at. It's actually the following day. I got everything pretty decent bead weld on it. Didn't get a chance to clean any of it off yet, but I got a decent bead on everything all the way around. Not too bad. I'm going to pull this thing back out, clean all the welds off, run another pass on everything, and then we're going to start on the reinforcement gussets. Hey, let's not... Welder, I'm gonna need you to not do this today.
update this side's done still hot cleaned it up just a little bit I like to leave the geographical features in there I think it gives it a little bit of character strength wise you should be good this one looks pretty decent in here decent enough for my standards and then we got this done down here polished it up just enough that uh, you can tell it was bad okay I need to take this mechanism out so I can get rod for example so I can get down in here and get that one that's kind of buried in there I'd like to get both sides of that got this side done cleaned up enough for my liking that should be fine Ooh, caught that cardboard on fire that explains the smell anywho let's do some gusset reinforcement some of that three-quarter plate I've got left and I know the three quarters overkill but again even though this is heavy to me I still want a little bit of weight more weight on it I just I don't want to unhook a bucket and then be launched to the moon you know it's not my goal Let's make a mark here. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'd like to just put one there. Maybe, maybe one up there. Here's what we've got. That's now. So here's where we're at. I got these kind of cleaned up, put a little bevel on both sides. Be fine for what I'm doing with it. We'll get those welded on. I'll show you what they look like. those on there they turned out pretty good they overlap a little bit but that's not too bad whenever we're all said and done we'll take a grinder just buzz it off so everything's flush pretty up real nice but that should add plenty of strength to those sides there's two more things we need to do I want to run a plate across here to catch that because that's only held on by just a little bit and that can take quite a bit of force and then I want to run a plate across the bottom here to tie into that mainly to reinforce these bottom pins you can just tell over years of wear that steel has just kind of been rubbed down and while we got it off this is a really good opportunity to do something about it so we can beef that up while we're in a good spot to
Maybe that'll save some time on my bevel grinding. Just cooking up a little steel here. Good to get a nice sear on each side. Ow, hot. So this one fits pretty good. I would like to be further down here towards the bottom, but there's the wear pattern of those rams. I don't know, if I was right there, I'd probably be okay, wouldn't I? Imagine me welding that up in there and then not being okay though, you know, wouldn't that be something? So that's welded up from the bottom side and they look pretty daggone good. I end up just welding all the way around them not too bad but before we flip it over and do the back side or top side let's go ahead and get this plate on here not doing anything fancy with this i'm just going to cut a section of this plate where it comes over and touches that so i can attach it to that and weld it on there i can't weld a plate across there can i dang about the only thing i can do is something like that you know and make it Boy, that might just be for another day. I'm not even gonna lie to you on that. I'm getting pretty short on time. Let's flip it over, get the top side of that welded, give her a good grind down and see if we can't get her, get her hooked up. Things we still got to get done. We've got to get this trimmed up and some clearance made so the hardware can actually function. But I want to do that when it's on the machine. But I got a couple odds and ends to do before we fire this machine up. We got to get these oil cooler lines hooked back up. I need to put some pipe dope on my old pressure gauge because it has a little leak. I never did put any on there. And I need to snug some of this up because of that. And I'd like to knock that grill out real fast. Well, you're going to find hard to believe is I don't know where my pipe dope is. So I'm just snugging them down. It's actually pretty loose just from vibration. I think that's where the leak's coming from. I got to hold that line while I do it. You guys, you can, you can hang out. Oh, look, you can hang out there. It won't be much one day to just take this off and add a little pipe dope to it. But I think it just being loose is the main issue there. So before I put these back, I'm going to slide this over. This is some old fire hose I bought off a fella uh, several years ago, and I still use it. This is called double jacketed line, and that's why there's an outer inner jacket. The inner jacket's got like a rubber on the inside of it to reduce the friction loss on uh, the water going through. But I'm just going to use the outer jacket. That's normally what I use. And we're going to slide it over these before we make the connection. Because with this plate here now, they're going to be kind of in this area. So that's going to go on like that. That we can slide. Man, you guys see that hose? Or if I got another another hose handy. I'm gonna put a socket on those so I can really pull them down good. I'm thinking these hose clamps probably just need snugged up as well. I didn't get too crazy with them the first time I put them on. We'll just snug these up some. This is a T-bar style hose clamp. You can pull them pretty tight. See that style hose clamp? A fella can cinch them down pretty good. Let's go around and retorque these. 
So I'm just starting low with the torque wrench and work my way up to see what they're at and then we're just going to add a little bit to it. This deep socket will give me just a little bit more room to get below this little flange. I bet that's going to be enough. One click at a time and we're going to get there. There we go. So hopefully that takes, we don't have a huge leak, there's just a couple seeps. Feels like there's one coming from this hose, which that being loose, and that screw seeping back there I think is probably what it's from. You're going to have a hard time believing this, but the grill is so beat up, it doesn't fit inside the nose cone. I know, I'm as shocked as you guys, so we'll have to do that another day. I do have the upper counterweights. I got to get those on, then tires on, then we can lower this thing down and try to get it hooked up. This is about to look really funny with a badly painted yellow wheel. So the realization is setting in even though we are very close we still have a ton of detail work to do we still got the back bucket to get on we I really really want that grill for the job I'm taking this to because if anything falls off the back of the forks and smashes that pump or oil cooler that's gonna be a lot of money I don't want to spend to repair and there's a ton of detail work left on this bracket up there I think we're in the right direction I think this is gonna work and we are so daggone close, just not close enough to make it in time like I wanted, which means next video, right back on this thing. I got a full couple days ahead of me because the next available day for me to do trucking is gonna be three or four days out. So hopefully we can get everything we've got going now buttoned up and then maybe I'll reveal what that project is. I'll let you guess though. If you wanna guess what I'm taking this to, how would you guess? I don't know. You just got to judge me. You got to judge the fact I'm using forks. You got to judge the fact that I'm going to be renting Dirt Perfect's man lift. And I'll be traveling about two hours north of me. And it's going to be moving a whole lot of paladin material. It's a salvage job. If you can guess what I'm salvaging.
I know exactly what I'll do. If you guess what I'm salvaging, I will sign one of the things I'm salvaging. I'll mail it to you with some stickers, and you can have some Captain Kleeman memorabilia for you. How's that sound? I think that's a pretty good deal. Sun setting. I gotta go get the grass mode. I hope I catch you guys on the next one.